So I've got another composition here. You can see this railing. I've got the oh, pinhole camera, real close. Awesome. But this lady's well. really interested in the pinhole camera, aren't you? I am. Very, absolutely. <laughs> it's amazing. Such a lovely vintage looking thing, and just to see what it does. You guys enjoying yourselves? Having a beer and a wine? Yeah. yeah. Are you locals or on holiday? Holiday. Bit of both. Bit of, bit of both. We own a house here, yeah. Oh, lovely. Yeah. So you come to, well, not one of those big ones over there, is it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, love. Is it? No, really? Well, that's handy, isn't it? Be sitting it's in the garden. garden. <laughs> this is my front garden. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm definitely intruding then. No, no, you're welcome. <laughs> so they are nice people. They live in these houses along here and literally just sitting on the beach front there having a few beers and a chat. And I sort of stormed in and said, can I take a picture of this um, railing? And they let me. Then they said, that's their camper van over the road. So here I am now with the camper van. Pin old camera set up. I just did an eight second exposure. If it comes out, all right, I'll drop back and give them a print in the week, if, they, if they're still here. Oh, bugger nuts. Look what's happened to me. Pinhole negatives. They all joined together. It's like one long panoramic. There's the guy's Volkswagen camera. You won't be getting a print of that. Oh, weird. Hi, guys, and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I brought out two cameras with me, two 6x9 cameras. Those negatives are absolutely mahoosive. I brought out the Agfa Record 2, which was kindly sent to me by Julie Devonport off of Instagram. Uh, thanks, Julie, if you're watching. And also, a pinhole camera as well from Renita Cameras. They sent me this a while back and I've only shot it a couple of times, but I thought as I'm shooting six by nine in this and this, I may as well put the two together and see what I've got. I've only got eight shots in this and only eight shots in this one as well. Uh, but let's get back to the Agfa Record 2. It's a folding camera, look at that. What a beast. And this is produced around the early 1950s and these things still work. It's amazing that you can still find these sort of cameras online, relatively inexpensive um, and getting yourself into medium format. As I said, six by nine, these are massive negs and uh, I've never really shot six by nine before for myself. So this will be quite interesting. And the Renisa pinhole camera, six by nine. It's also got um, a couple of little backs as well that I can put inside and make it six by six, six, four, five. Um, this is a six by nine one that I've got in here. This is crazy. The aperture on this little pinhole is 200 F213. Get that one in your nut. You get real close to stuff like I am with a GoPro now and get real wide shots. So we'll have a little fun with this as well. But getting back to the Agfa Record 2, Record, Record, I don't know, Record 2, whatever they want to call it, um, from the early 1950s. It's a real simple camera, bellows folding camera. Uh, there's no autofocus, there's no uh, range finder inside. You notice I've put a little Rory range finder on the top. That's a bit of a tongue twister. Um, Rory range finder, if you've had a few beers. Rory range finder on the top there, uh, which basically I can dial in, look through, uh, get my focus in right. The two parallels come together and it will tell me what to dial in on the lens. This is in meters and this is in meters at all. So there's no conversions. This is going to be real simple. Uh, pronto shutter um, and the apertures go from 4.5 to f32 and I've only got a few shutter speeds 25 50 100 200 and bulb mode as well but today I reckon f11 um, around 125th so I'm kind of just pushing it over the 100 mark uh, I've got Ilford a 100 Delta inside so um, it should work perfectly well for me I've already done one portrait on my daughter's boyfriend Jacob he's gone home and I took a quick shot of him before he went and this thing is 70 years old. This is like early 1950s. I think it was made around 1952. And if you look at the nostalgic stuff of 1952, you know, Marilyn Monroe looked like this. Telephones looked like this. Computers looked like this. BMWs looked like this. Alfa Romeos looked like this. And Ford Anglia looked like this. This was your American president and this was the British prime minister. And back in the early 50s, Superman looked like this. And when you look at the difference in size between the 645 a 6x6 and a 6x9. These things are massive. Uh, so let's have a little shoot up around here and see what we can get. So the beach is absolutely swamped with uh, families and children. So I think that's the last place that I really want to go and photograph. I'm not into trying to get into conflicts. Why are you photographing my kids and all that stuff, you know? So I'm keeping off the beach. I've just come away from it. And I just found these reeves against this old broken fence. This thing I can obviously shoot landscape or portrait. You have got a little tiny clip here, uh, like a lot of these folding cameras. I'll show you where you can open it up and you can balance it down on something like so and take a portrait shot or a selfie or whatever. It has got a timer on it, but it doesn't work. But uh, I'm gonna take a little shot of these reeves here. And on the back, you've got your little red window there for your six by nine. 
so I can see which frame I'm going forward to. So now I'm going to advance to number two. And as you advance, you get this little click, which stops you double exposing. There you go, frame number two. Then I've got to just check my meter in. Uh, sorry, just check my um, focus in on the rangefinder. And it reckons that's about 2.5 meters away. Oh. So now I dial in 2.5 meters on the lens itself. There it is there. Advance the shutter. F11, just know about 1 25th of a second with that film. Take me shot. I keep trying to figure out why 6x9 was a popular format for these cameras um, back in the 1950s or so. I'm trying to figure out who would have shot 6x9, maybe professionals in the studios, maybe um, keen amateurs. But I don't know, it just seems a, a large format to shoot when you only get eight photographs from a roll of 120. With 6x5, you'd get 15. 6x6, six six, you'd get 12. But trying to figure out how, how popular 6x9 negatives were back then, or the 6x9 format. If you know, let us know in the comments. Little postcard shot there then wide shot the whole beach for all the people in the sea and stuff. <laughs> it's crazy, so I've only missed uh, one frame, that was uh, frame number five. I skipped right past it and went to number six. So one frame wasted, I've only got eight frames, so it feels like a um, pretty short time on this camera. But uh, don't forget, I've got the pinhole to shoot in a moment. I'm going to get real close with that pinhole and see what creative stuff I can get with, the, with that. Um, but as far as this sort of camera goes, I just feel like these are best suited for maybe stuff that's, you know, on infinite. I like landscapes and stuff like that. If you're going to try and get creative, it's hard to because you can't see through the lens. You can only kind of guesstimate your composition, you know. Frame number eight. Got the shutter. I'll go portrait again on this one. Make for a bit of swell. Done. And that's it, that's all my eight, eight photographs taken. So uh, rewind the film back, get the pinhole camera out and see what I can get with that. So it's day two and I'm back down sea view again with the, with the camera, the old 1950s camera and the pinhole again. And yesterday was, um, well, you saw yourself on the negatives or the photographs that I showed. I had light leaks on this camera and also some funny sort of hairy looking things going on. So I had a good old look inside. I gave the bellows a good clean. There was a couple of trapped hairs inside the bellows that I found uh, I managed to get a toothbrush and get those out and also replace the seal on this side when I opened the camera and looked at the seal there's no other seals on this camera I know is apart from the door bracket here or the door hinge um, so I took the old seal off and it literally fell apart and I put a new seal on uh, you know and it's not a bad idea to keep seals in your closet for any of your old cameras. I've got uh, a pack of seals that I shoot and I can cut to my own taste. Uh, so I've put a new seal on here. And what happened with the pinhole camera, um, I didn't show you the photographs that I took yesterday. I'll show you the negatives now. Look, they're all bunched together. <laughs> I put the roll of film in the wrong side of the pinhole camera, so I was taken up the wrong way. That doesn't sound right. I was putting the, uh, I put the, the um, 120 here 
in the pinhole camera on this side and was taking it up on this side. Well, I should have put it in here and took it up this side. There's no instructions, so it wasn't that clear, um, but I should have known because there's a little tiny retainer in this side that keeps the spool or the reel tight as it's being wound back onto the take-up spool. Uh, so when you take it out, it's nice and tight. When I took it out, it was a little bit floppy, a little bit flappy, and that's why I've got light leaks down the side as well. So, um, but you know, one thing about my channel is I don't try and sugarcoat nothing. If I, if I screw up, I'll screw up and I'll show you guys. So yeah, uh, screwed up yesterday. Let's not screw up today. Two more rolls of 100 Delta, let's go. It takes some getting used to. When I'm advancing to the next frame and I'm walking along, all of a sudden I see what I want to take a photograph of. I pick up and I press the button. And it does nothing. And I haven't advanced the shutter. Um, but then when I do advance the shutter, I can't then take a picture. I have to move on to the next frame. So I've wasted two frames uh, doing that mistake. It's just a case of getting used to a camera, I suppose. So that's it, another 16 shots taken, eight on the pinhole, another eight on the Ag for record. How'd you say it? Record? Record? Do you keep something on record? Or do you record something? I don't know. Anyway, um, <laughs> 16 shots done. I know that I loaded the pinhole correctly, so they should come out nice depending on the exposures that I did. And I know that hopefully I'll fix the light leak in this camera and got those hairs out so the photographs I did on this are okay but this is all just testing around with these two cameras and you know uh, making sure they work for me and I know next time to take them out if I want to. So I'm really happy I managed to get the light leak sorted out on this camera which was that dodgy little tiny light seal on the door hinge there I ripped that off replaced it with a new seal uh, went out and did my photographs and I got no more light leaks so I'm convinced that that was the problem and also a couple of hairs inside the bellows I've never noticed that before with my folding cameras um, but I took those off and give it a good old clean inside and I didn't get any more of that trouble either so um, you know as for this camera them taking the pictures for the first time I think it's fantastic these little folding cameras are brilliant especially if you want to get into medium format uh, from 35 mil on a budget these cameras relatively inexpensive and they are awesome lenses as well some of the shots that i got from this are really sharp uh, a couple of them are a little bit questionable where i was trying to focus on something uh, more closer to me rather than the distance but um the only thing the only gripe i've got with some of those pictures is the horizons you know i should have took a little bit more time to get my horizons straight but it's true what i said earlier on these aren't through the lens cameras you've got this little tiny view viewfinder here uh, and that's where you're trying to shape up your composition so if you want bang on compositions you might you know have a little trouble with these sort of cameras but they are good fun to use and uh, you get great results from them as well i'm not quite sure about the six by nine format i know some people rave about it you know i'm often shooting six four five and six by six but the six by nine format only gives me eight shots on a 120 roll and it got me thinking earlier on that like i said in the video who was shooting six by nine back then? Was there six by six? What there must have been six four five and six by six back in the day. 
But who was going for the six by nines? Maybe they were journalists, maybe it was magazine stuff. I don't know. Um, I'd like to know if any of you guys know, uh, let us know in the comments. Also, the Belarus pinhole camera, I've got to say a massive thanks to Renisa Cameras for sending me this one. And this came in a nice little fancy box like this, all the way from Belarus. And inside the box was the camera and also some masks as well for changing the format, 64566 and a couple of, a couple of others in there as well. Six, seven, I think. And um, fantastic little pinhole camera this one is. It's quite big, quite heavy, quite bulky, but um, it's no problem, just go out and shoot it. I managed to sort out the problem where I had the 120 roll on the wrong side round. I'll show you those negatives now. Oh, and that's what happened when I put the 120 roll the wrong way round. That's where the start of the picture should have been, but they ended up at the end all bunched together, like one long panoramic it's a, it's a bit crazy actually i might be able to print that in one long panoramic and frame it but i probably won't and looking at some of the photographs that i took on the pinhole camera you know pinhole photography it is what it is it's it, ver it varies between camera to camera this one is relatively sharp i thought for a pinhole uh, but most pinholes are kind of cost soft focus and it gives this one's giving me a vignette around the edges some of my pinhole cameras don't do that so i suppose it all depends on the little tiny um, precision pinhole in the middle there um, but it is what it is and it, you know they've got their own look in their own way uh, I quite like pinhole great fun cameras to use and in case you're wondering that Ilford Delta 100 that I was shooting was dated 2014 it'd been kept in a freezer for many years all that time uh, and that was sent to me by a kind guy called Mark so Mark if you're watching uh, you did ask me let me know if the film works worked well I didn't do any adjustments at all for me exposures just shot it as as is and developed it and they came out really well mate so thanks very much for that thanks everyone for watching the uh, channel and supporting the work that I do on the channel I hope you enjoyed this video and like I say if you're looking at getting into medium format try and grab one of these old folding cameras they're great fun inexpensive and uh, can give you good results I'll catch you next time guys Hi guys, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be playing with a couple of old cap. Hi guys, and welcome back to the 